Hello, it's Mark from MC Electrical. If you've just purchased a solar system and you used a Fronius inverter and went a little bit further by purchasing a Fronius smart meter, good news, you've got a heck of a lot of information about your solar power production, about your household consumption, and even better, about how much that solar system is actually saving you. This video is going to take you through solarweb.com to show you how you can find all of that information. If you don't know how to log into solarweb.com, I did a video previously that we'll link to up here. That video explains how you can log into SolarWeb. If you notice over here that the system is offline, there's a big offline button down the bottom here. You can check out the link above us now and that will show you how to reconnect your Wi-Fi because your inverter needs to be connected to your home internet so that we can get all this information. Now, we'll just assume that you've done that, you've logged in and you are now looking at your live data. This system at the moment, it's around about 3.30 in the afternoon and it's a six kilowatt system that is producing 2.86 kilowatts you can see from this bubble graph over here and this bubble graph just divides where the power is going because we've got a smart meter installed it's measuring that 1.2 kilowatts of that power is going back to the grid and 1.5 is being consumed by the house at the moment now one mistake people make quite often is when they get their electricity bill in and their solar feed-in credits are $50 or something and they think our oh, solar's a waste of time all I'm saving is $50. It's really important to know that that $50 is only counting this portion here, how much you're sending back to the grid. It's not counting the stuff that you are producing and using before it even gets to the electricity meter. Energex can't measure that, they don't measure that. That is the job of a Fronia smart meter. Now to get a little bit more information of what your system has actually saved you, you can look on the dashboard over here on the earnings side. However, this will mean nothing. It'll be irrelevant to you if you haven't set it up properly. So if you jump into settings over here, you can put in your tariffs. So I'm just gonna press this button and we'll find ourselves in the setup. And if you click on tariffs, you can then go in and set up your reference tariff, which is tariff 11 or how much you pay for power, 20 or 25 or 27 cents or whatever it might be and set up your feed-in tariff. So this customer has gone in there and updated his from time to time, which is good because your power bill will change normally 1st of July every year. And quite often your feed-in tariff may change without you knowing it just anywhere. Like I know back in January, my feed-in tariff dropped from 16 cents back to 11 cents. So I just changed my retailer recently. It's worth keeping your eye on that. And if you press add here, you can add in a new tariff. Uh, so say 1st of July, you'll add in what your utility is charging you for power or down below for your feed-in tariff. Make sure you put in 0.16 for 16 cents, not 1.6, which would be $16 and it would throw your figures right out. And you can put the date range in there from 1st of July, 2020 or whenever your bill increases or decreases, hopefully. Now, if you want to edit something and you've made a mistake of it, just click on that first and then the edit button will come up or the delete button will come up and it should be fine from there. So I'm just gonna press the back arrow and we'll get back and look at our earnings chart. Now, this chart should update at five minutes past the hour, this part of Solar Web Update. So you can get onto it at five minutes past the hour and see if your earnings have updated and they start to make sense. Otherwise, wait a little bit longer. Maybe tomorrow it'll take that time to update depending on the actual setting of your inverter. But that information should be able to update. And you'll see this customer has saved $4,000 since the system was installed. And today he has saved $3.55. So that is a combination of what he has used and what he has sent back to the grid. So $100 a month or $520 for 2020, as you can see over there. So that's some really useful information. So you can really get a fairly accurate grasp of what your system is saving at a glance. We won't worry about the image down there or the weather data, but we will now look into energy balance. And energy balance is just a graph of what your system is producing over time. So you can either click on the button here or this image here is really just a big button. So I'm gonna click on that. And this is what the system has produced so far today. You can see we've had a little bit of a cloudy day here in Brisbane and the gray part below is his consumption during the day. The white part over here is the power that he's using at night. But to have that nighttime 
usage recorded, you're going to have to have night mode turned on on your inverter. And we make sure that's set on most of our inverters. Sometimes it can default to off. So you'll just have to go into your inverter settings and change that on. If you're our customer and that happens to be off for some reason, give us a call and we'll talk you through how you can simply turn that on. Okay, so that's today's data. If we went back and clicked back here, we get to yesterday's data. And the day before was a perfect solar production day. And you'll notice this customer is only producing four kilowatts of power. That's to be expected. It's getting into winter. You'll never see six kilowatts of panels producing six kilowatts. It just doesn't work that way. There's efficiency losses, temperature losses. So we don't see that in the real world, but we can see that this has been a perfect production curve here. Now, if you want to really see if your system is producing, you're going to have to look over a longer period of time. The bad news is Fronius doesn't give you that information unless you subscribe to Premium. Fronius is coming up with a better version of Premium at the end of 2020 or sometime about then, which will give you a battery sizing tool so you can see if it's worth having a battery. It'll give you predictive data of how much your system will produce tomorrow given the weather forecast and uh, some other cool features like that. But the information that we've got so far with the version of premium is pretty great. So let's have a look into it a bit further. If we click into month, you can see what the system has produced on any given day this month. And you know this goes up and down with rainy weather. The system's producing around about 30 kilowatt hours on average per day over this month. Then you can click into year and you get a lot more average data of what we've produced so far in April and what we produced in March. But I like to go back, especially when you've got a full year of data and see what the system has produced. Now, I've gone into this a little bit more on the previous video, which will be linked to above me here again. But you can go in and see what your system is producing correctly if you go into the near map data that we sent you or any decent installer should have sent you an estimate of what your system should be producing month by month. And this is the report that we sent to our customer. We put all the data in there, the orientation of the panels and so on and so forth. And it predicts what the system is going to produce 31 kilowatt hours for an average day. So if you go 31 by 31, I'll just do a quick example here. 31 kilowatt hours for the month of January times 31 days in January is 961 kilowatt hours. And we go back there and the customer actually produced 1,098. So we try to get that fairly accurate. Within 10% is pretty good. We found uh, back in 2018, we were probably underestimating or our systems performed better than we expected they would. But obviously, this is predictive. It's not an exact science predicting how the weather is going to be in the future. But it is a good tool to help you know whether your system is producing properly or not. Now, what's more interesting with this data is you can go month by month and you can see how much you've sent back to the grid and how much you have used from the grid. And the premium version gives you this handy little button up here, which is the return on investment. And so you can click in there, especially if we go back to total, we get the kind of information that we are looking at on the home page, but you can zoom in on a lot more. And yield basically means the power that you've produced from your panels and you've used it directly in your house. So this customer saved $1,100 in 2019 with that. And the power that they sent back to the grid, they have saved $827. And of course, those figures are only accurate because the customer has updated his tariff in settings. Now, you can obviously go a lot more granular and you can work out for three months or you can count up every day of the three months and, and just to make sure the bill that you're getting is accurate. But it's a good way of keeping track of your power usage. Knowledge is control for power usage and seeing whether it's actually worth you changing your usage habits or whether you're happy paying for the energy that you are using. And what's more important is when we come in and tell you that this um, $8,000 system is going to pay itself off in, in three to four years, you want to see that. And let's say the system it was a smaller system. This might have been six or seven thousand dollars. It's uh, as we saw before. It saved him two thousand dollars last year. So that's going to pay itself off in three to four years, as we would have predicted. And you can hold us to account, not for your usage. We can't control how often you run your air conditioning, but you can hold us to account for the production of the system. And if you've got any concerns that your system isn't performing as the near map estimate that we gave you, if it's not within 10% or so of that, then it could be that a tree's grown, it could be because you've had a smash panel, it could be because you've got other issues. If you call us up about that, this is how we look into it, is this extra tab here called analysis. 
And if you click into the history button there, we would go down here and choose the inverter, not the energy meter for this analysis, or we can use that. And we might want to choose a few different figures here. The power of both parts, the inverter, the inverter's got two PP trackers. We want, might want to see the voltage from three different phases and the total power. And if I press OK there, we'll get some data and we can see that it looks like the voltage is sitting around 240 volts. And so the customer doesn't have a high energex grid voltage issue. If we go back onto a nice clear day that we had a couple of days ago, we can really look in and see how one tracker is compared to another. And we may have a problem with one panel that's dragging a whole string down. And this is a place that we pull up that data. That reactive power is an interesting figure on power factor correct correction and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of it is quite complex to get your head around. But one thing that we have picked up with this is we can see the voltage of each tracker. We've got the details of how many panels we put in a string. And let's say there's 10 panels in a string, then your voltage should be sitting, let's say, around 300 volts. But if that voltage drops back to 270 volts, we've found quite often that there is a Tygo optimizer failed. And we've gone into every single job that we've had Tygo optimizers and checked that. And we've found a few have failed over time. So this kind of stuff is worth checking up on and making sure that your system is producing as it should be and just as importantly that investment of five or ten grand or whatever you put into solar is paying itself off so you can feel good about it or you can make some changes and call us up and get us to sort out any issues that is going on with the solar system now i hope that has been a little bit of a head start there's a lot a lot of different ways you can look at that data and analyze that data if you spend a bit of time at it but they're the main buttons that you're going to want to use on solar web and good luck with that if you're our customer got any concerns we're always here to help you give us a call and we'll talk you through in more detail or have a discussion about how your system is performing thanks for watching